What's the story behind ESOM speakers? Okay, this question, <laughs> off the wall and totally surprised, comes from Brian in Tempe, Arizona. Brian rate, uh, writes, I found myself perusing the comment section of one of your videos and noticed there were quite a few people expressing an interest in your involvement with the ESOM speaker brand. This piqued my interest as well, and I recently picked up a pair of ESOM RSF 1000 towers on Facebook Marketplace. Facebook has a marketplace? Who knew? I don't know. I don't, I don't pay attention to it. Which I practically stole for $80. Wow, that's cheap. They're really nice speakers, and I'm enjoying them quite a bit. My question, or should I say request, is as follows. Can you please finish your story about Arnie and yourself getting the brand into Best Buy? I've tried to find information on the company, but details are hard to nail down. Any light you could shed onto the subject would be greatly appreciated. Oh boy. You're asking me to dig back into the past. I'll try and do that without consuming an hour of time, as I, I like to keep the Ask Paul videos <laughs> short and sweet, if we can. This, this is not a short and sweet story, but um, I will do my best. Years ago, between the years of 1990 to 1997, I, well, in 90, I sold PS Audio to Randy Patton and Steve Jeffrey, and I had an opportunity to go build loudspeakers with Arnie Nudell, my mentor, my hero, probably the world's best loudspeaker designer at the time. He ran Infinity, and Infinity was the world's largest speaker company at some point. And I mean, you know, anyway, so that, that's a whole other story. I moved my family from California to Vail, Colorado, picked up and went, um, and it was a great seven years. And if you've read my book, 99% True, which uh, a lot of this is contained in, and, and um, selfish plug, go to Amazon. It's Anyway, we're not going to plug that. In the book, I talk about how we moved in 1990, the, the whole family, to Vail, started building speakers with Arnie. So along about 1995, 94, 95, we, we were struggling financially at Genesis. Build, and we built loudspeakers, great loudspeakers, the Gen 1s, the Gen 2s, the Gen 3s. Um, they were terrific loudspeakers, but we weren't running the business the way it should have been run. Let's just put it like that. And we were hungry to try and fix the problems. We were going all over the world. We were spending too much money. So at one point, our good friends from Polk Audio, George Klopfer, who was the president, Matt Polk, um, Sandy Gross, uh, Craig, all, the guys who were part of Polk Audio, owned Polk Audio at the time, were, were really good friends of ours. And, and in, in particular, George Klopfer. So George Klopfer is, is an amazing guy. I love George. And he was the president of Polk Audio. Avid skier, good skier. Uh, so is Matt. And so one winter, with that little bit of background, George and I went, we lived in Vail, and George came out to, to ski, and George, Matt, and I were skiing around. I think Arnie did at one point, then he left. Anyway, somehow or other, I wound up on a chairlift, just me and George. George is president of Polk Audio. And George says, well, I hear you guys are struggling a little bit. Right? Yeah, yeah, we've got our, got our issues. Well, he said, uh, would you be interested in a, a type of partnership? Okay, I'm all ears, George. And George is an exceptional businessman. Polk was doing great. Uh, I mean, look, those guys had it all. And got to talking, and uh, it turned out that Polk Audio was heavily invested in what we used to call specialty retailers. Okay? So that meant basically um, the, the little guys, the listen ups here, the, uh, oh, I don't know where, you know, where are Meyer Emco's, the, the um, 
independent retailers, small chains, independents. And, and they kind of owned that section of the market, which was eh, lower end, mid-fi uh, loudspeakers. Polk Audio was everywhere. And they had been approached by Best Buy to have Polk Audio brought in to Best Buy. And George said, Our, we'd have a mass walkout. If we went into Best Buy, all these guys look at Best Buy as death. I mean, it's like Home Depot moving in or Kmart or something. And so uh, they would all abandon us. And I can't do that. However, I want to be in Best Buy. That's a lot of business. So how about if you guys design a brand of loudspeakers that we manufacture, we build, we sell to Best Buy, and it'll be under a different name. My retailers are happy because here this other brand is being sold at Best Buy. What do they care? There's tons of brands being sold at Best Buy, and that's how it started. So Arnie designed an entire line of loudspeakers with my help, but it's mostly Arnie. And in a series of meetings with their marketing and sales guy, Jim Hurd, we came to call it EOSone. And EOSone was uh, EOS. Sone, of course, is sound. EOS was like top rate or something. I don't remember, but it was a combination of EOS and Sone and it turned out to be EOSone. And we designed the whole line. We then had all these prototypes made, and now it was time for George, Matt, and Sandy to sell this to Best Buy. At the time, the CEO of Best Buy was a guy named Brad Anderson. Brad, wonderful guy, love Brad, Brad, Brad Anderson. I don't remember the other guys, but uh, to try and speed this up a little bit. So we had a big shootout. So the Brad Anderson and his, his troop of, of guys from Best Buy, uh, who at the time were fighting Circuit City. They were in this heated competition, which Best Buy eventually won. And they wanted to beat Bose. So we rented a condo in Beaver Creek, big, big place, and we set up a home theater set up with a series of Bose speakers. Then we put our ES on eggs. We call them eggs. They were these small speakers. And did a quick A-B. And Brad and his guys sat down, played the Bose system, put a movie, whatever it was. Then we put on the ESOne system, and it just killed it. I mean, it killed it. And they all turned around and looked at us and just stood up and smiled, walked over to George, shook his hand, and they went off in the bedroom. George came out about an hour later, just beaming from you know, ear to ear and said, that's the single biggest PO I have ever signed. I mean, thrilled. So we got into Best Buy, and then we started a year later or so, started manufacturing. They built tons of them. Um, the way Best Buy does it is, they, I don't know, they have a gazillion stores, right? So you get put into like 10% of their stores, or 20, I don't remember what it was, but some small percentage of stores, and then they see how it does. So ES own speakers were, we had a whole line of speakers, and we spent three or four years marketing those speakers, helping them. I mean, we did, they did all the marketing, but Arnie and I would travel around to Best Buy stores and give lectures and talks and talk to customers. And it had Arnie Newdell's name associated with it. It was, and at one point, and they had a whole team doing all this. At one point, it got up to about a $30 million deal, which, you know, wasn't bad, 30 million bucks. That's, that's a hell of a lot bigger than we are. And Best Buy, cancel it after, I don't know, four years. I, 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 my memory is kind of unclear about how long it was. Why? Because $30 million a year wasn't enough to cut it for Best Buy. They wanted bigger numbers and they killed it. And that was the end of ESOne. So there you have it, my friends. That's the story of ESOne and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Thanks. All right. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.